something about the Psalms I really love. You know, I love the honesty of it, the rawness. You know, it's something childlike. Uh, I mean, you say he's brutally honest. They are prayers. They are prophetic prayers. It's not just poetry, but it's poetry on fire. You know, so when you put a melody to something like the Lord is my rock, my strength, my shield, my strong tower. You know that heaven is agreeing with you. The Psalms were intended for corporate use. And when you sing straight from the word, you're not only singing to Jesus, but you are singing Jesus because he is the word and he is perfect theology. I 
Greetings, and thank you so much for tuning in to Living Strong today. It's always our joy and delight to come your way and spend this time with you in God's Word, together in God's presence, and also to spend some time in prayer with you. We're doing something very simple all these weeks, just taking a psalm and uh, spending some time just reflecting on the psalm and drawing some insights from that. On our program today, we'd just like to spend some time in Psalm 27. One of the reasons many of us identify with Psalm 27 uh, is because David, like us, went through many seasons of adversity in his life. And those of us who are familiar with the story of David, we understand or we recognize different seasons of his life, starting from his early days when he had to run for his life to protect himself from King Saul, uh, to other periods of time in his life when he went through difficulties, he went through challenges. In fact, he spent quite a bit of time out in the wilderness, living in caves, uh, trying to defend himself, protect himself. And even later on in his life when uh, David, after he'd become king and been recognized as king over all of Israel, uh, he had to face challenges. He had to face uh, rebellion and uprising in his own kingdom and from his own family. And so David did go through various seasons of adversity. And, and Psalm 27 is one of the Psalms which were written in such a season, a season of adversity. And we see three things, three main things that David shares with us out of his own heart, of course, inspired by the Holy Spirit during such a time of adversity. David talks to us in this psalm of what God is to him during adversity. Who is God to us in the midst of adversity, in the midst of difficulties, in the midst of challenges? Who is God to me? Secondly, we see in this psalm that David sharing with us of what he does, what I do in the middle of adversity. When I'm faced with challenges, when I'm confronted with difficulties and obstacles and sometimes even a threat to my own uh, existence, my own uh, survival in, in life. What do I do? David shares that, to our, shares that with us in the psalm. And he also shares with us his prayer in the midst of adversity. How does he pray? How does he cry out to God for help? What is, his, what is the expression of his heart in the middle of adversity 
towards his God. So we would like to observe these three things as we go through this psalm together. You know, life is not devoid of challenges. And we do face all kinds of challenges, especially in our uh, contemporary society. Uh, there are challenges right from the time you're going through school or college. You face the pressure of having to perform. You face the pressure of, you know, of uh, sometimes extremely competitive peers. Uh, you face the pressure of uh, peers who want you to do wrong. As you go on into your professional life, you face challenges there. Uh, then in the family, the home, and, and so on. All kinds of challenges could uh, beset us, could confront us. And so we can draw some valuable insights and encouragement from this psalm. Psalm 27, verse 1, David says, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked came against me to eat up my flesh, my enemies and my foes, they stumbled and fell. These two verses, David is expressing who God is to him in the midst of adversity. So he, 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 he describes to us his setting. There are the wicked people. People are against him. And they are threatening his life, are uh, coming against him. And then he says, in the middle of such a situation, God, this is who God is to me. God is my strength. God is my salvation. Salvation meaning the one who delivers me, the one who protects me, the one who preserves my life the one who keeps me safe. This is who God is to me. He is my light. That means in this seemingly dark time of my life, my light, my hope, my inspiration is God himself. The Lord is my light. The Lord is my salvation. The Lord is the strength of my life. So, you know, when challenges come, what do they do? They very often drain us of our strength or our, of our capacity to keep pressing on in life. And David is describing God as the source of his strength. And therefore he says, of whom shall I be afraid? Whom am, am I going to fear? Uh, I will not let fear come into my heart. So remember these three things. It, when, when you are in the middle of adversity, this is who God is to you. The Lord is your light. The Lord is your salvation. And the Lord is your strength. And therefore, you can with David say, say with David, I am not going to be afraid. And he continues in verse 3, verses 3 and 4, where he talks to, us, talk to us, talks to us about what he does in the midst of adversity. He says, though an army may encamp against me, my heart will not fear. The war may arise up against me, in this I will be confident. One thing I have desired of the Lord, that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. So David's saying, you know, even if an army comes against me, so think about it. Here's one man and a huge army, a battalion of soldiers coming against him. He says this, he says, I will not fear. I will be confident. And then he says, this is going to be my posture. Verse 4, he says, this is what I'll do. I will keep my eyes on the Lord. I will dwell in the house of the Lord. My desire will be towards God. My focus will be on God. You know, many times we read only verse 4, and we talk about verse 4 where David said, one thing I have desired of the Lord, that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord and I, all the days of my life, and I will behold the beauty of the Lord, and I will uh, uh, inquire in his temple. We usually use verse 4 by itself. But when you read it in its context, it is so rich. David is saying, I'm going to do this when there's an army encamped against me. That means when there is so much of uh, oppression, adversity coming against me, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to sit in the house of the Lord, I'm going to gaze upon the beauty of the Lord. I'm going to listen to what he has to tell me because that's the only thing I desire. Now, can you imagine? Let's say you are in the midst of some real difficult financial situation. 
Or let's say you're in the midst of a very difficult workplace situation. You know, maybe your boss is upset, your peers are, you know, trying to pull you down, all of that, whatever that situation may be. In the middle of that, can you say, can I say, I will not fear. I'm going to be confident in who my God is. And here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to just dwell in his presence. I'm just going to gaze upon him. I'm just going to listen to what he has to tell me. And this is the only thing I desire to do in the midst of such a situation. Wow, what a lesson for us to learn. Something that you and I can take and definitely you and I can do. If David could do that, you and I can do it. So the next time you and I are in the midst of adversity, let's remember what David did. Let's try to do what he did. Though an army should encamp against me, I'm not going to let fear come into my life. I'm not going to let fear come into my heart. I'm not going to let fear dominate my thinking. Instead, I'm going to put my gaze upon the beauty of the Lord. The beauty talking about the magnificence of God. The greatness of God. Who God is. His all-surpassing greatness. I'm going to gaze upon it. I'm going to keep my eyes focused on that. And I'm going to listen to what he says. And I will not let fear come in. I will stay confident. Let's do that when we are faced with challenges. Verse 5. For in the time of trouble, he will hide me in his pavilion. In the secret place of his tabernacle, he shall hide me. He shall set me high upon a rock. So this is who God is. Verse 5. This is who God is to David in the midst of adversity. This is who God is to you and me in the midst of adversity. Who is he? He's the one who hides us. He is the one who surrounds us and protects us. He is the one who causes us to dwell in safety. And he says here, he will set me on high. That means he will put me in a place that is inaccessible. He will put me in a place that is so secure. It's like being in a cleft of the rock where the enemy cannot find me. So this is who God is to me. He is my, in one word, protector. He is my defense. He is the one who comes to my aid and my rescue in the midst of adversity. Let's look to God that way. That this is who our God is to us in the midst of our adversities. That God is our defense. And if God is our defender, if God is the one who's hiding us in his own pavilion, in his own sacred place, who can then gain access to us? Nobody. We trust in that. Verse 6, he says, this is what he does. And now my head will be lifted up above my enemies all around me. Therefore, I will offer sacrifices of joy in his tabernacle. I will sing, yes, I will sing praises to God. Now think about that. He says, you know, there are enemies all around me, but I'm not going to hold my head down in shame, in anticipation of defeat. I'm not going to cover in anticipation of being overwhelmed by my enemy. But no, when the enemy is all around me, what does David say? I'm going to be in the presence of God. I'm going to offer up sacrifices of joy. I'm going to sing praises to the Lord. That means I'm going to be joyful and I'm going to praise God with enemies all around me. Three things. I'm going to keep my head up high. I'm going to be joyful. I'm going to be praising God with enemies all around me. This is what David said, I will do in the midst of adversity. Verses 7, 8, and 9. This is his prayer. He says, Hear, O Lord, when I cry with my voice, have mercy also upon me and answer me. When you said, Seek my face, my heart said to you, Your face, Lord, I will seek. Do not hide your face from me. Do not turn your servant away in anger. You have been my help. Do not leave me nor forsake me, O God of my salvation. So David is having his conversation with God as he is sitting, gazing upon the beauty of the Lord, inquiring in his temple. And in his conversation, God tells him one thing to do in the midst of adversity. What does God tell David to do? God says, seek my face. He says in verse 8, when you said, seek my face. What would God say to you and me in the midst of our difficulties in the midst of our challenges. Three words. 
Seek my face. Look to me. Gaze upon me. Come after me. In the midst of your adversity, just come after. And David's response is, Lord, your face, Lord, I will seek. He's saying yes to what God is telling him. He's saying, God, I will seek you. And I'm looking to you, God. I'm praying to you that you, O oh God, will be my help. You will not forsake me. You are the God of my salvation. And he says in verse 10, when my father and my mother forsake me, the Lord will take care of me. This is who God is to David in the midst of adversity. He takes care of David even when the closest people on earth may abandon him. Even when the closest people on earth may forsake him. And of course, David at an early age had to leave home. He had to be on his own. He had to leave father and mother. Yet David says, the Lord will help me. Sometimes in life you may feel like you're standing alone. Even the closest people. Your very own parents may not be there for you for whatever reason. Maybe you're far away geographically. Maybe they're no more. Maybe they have forsaken you. Maybe they've written you off. Whatever the reason is, and you feel all alone, then remember what David said in verse 10 of Psalm 27. When my father and mother forsake me, when my closest people forsake me, the Lord will help me. The Lord will take up my case. The Lord will take me up. He says in verses 11 and 12, Teach me your way, O Lord. Lead me in a smooth path because of my enemies. Do not deliver me to the will of my adversaries, for false witnesses have risen against me, and such as breathe out violence. Verses 11 and 12 is just prayer to God during adversity. Saying, God, you teach me, you lead me, you guide me through this. And that's something we can pray. Lord, in the midst of this adversity, I have set my face on you. You are my light, my salvation. I refuse to let fear come in. You are my confidence. I'm listening to you. I'm gazing on you. I'm listening to your word. And God, I am asking you to lead me and guide me through this. Bring me out of this. Show me the way out of this. So look at what David said in verse 13. He said, I would have have lost heart unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. So David believed something. In the midst of his his, his worst night, he believed something. What did he believe? He believed that he would be in the land of the living. That means he's going to come out through this alive. This is not the end of his life. These enemies who have surrounded him are not going to prevail against him. They're not going to destroy him. He's going to come through alive and he's going to see the goodness of God on his life. You know, that's something you and I must learn to do. That in the midst of our worst night, don't lose heart. Don't lose hope. Don't let discouragement overtake you. Don't let fear dominate you. Don't lose your confidence. Like David, instead of losing heart, you make the choice to believe. Believe what? That you will live and be in the land of the living. That means you're going to come out of this situation and you're going to be in that land where you're going to be blessed. You're going to experience the goodness of God. And you will see the goodness of God on your life. God is going to bless you. He's going to prosper you. He's going to bring you out of these calamities. Believe that you will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. And so he says in verse verse 14, he continues with this posture. What it is? What is it? Wait on the Lord. Be of good courage. Be courageous. He will strengthen your heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. Continue to be patient. Continue to wait on the Lord. How do you wait on the Lord? Just go back to what he said. I'm dwelling in his presence. I'm gazing on his face. And I'm listening to what he has to say. You wait on the Lord. That's your posture of waiting. Of being in his presence, gazing his face, listening to him. He says, when you wait on the Lord, he will strengthen your heart. And you'll come through out. Through this situation, through this calamity, through this difficulty, you'll come out victorious. You will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Psalm 27. What do you do in the midst of adversity? Who is God in the midst of adversity? How do you pray in the midst of adversity? And all of this, David says, takes place in your tabernacle, in the house of God. Now, it may be a physical place that you can go to, But it does not have to be a physical place. It simply means that you are in his house by being in his presence. That's the key. 
Thank you so much for being with us on the program today. And before we close, we'd like to take a moment just to pray together. And I want to pray with you. If you are going through a difficult season in life, take encouragement. Let's do the things we learned from Psalm 27, and God will bring us through. Let's pray. Father, I stand right now with those who are listening, who may be going through difficult times in their life. I pray right now that all fear will leave, all discouragement will leave. God, that, uh, that your confidence will come into their hearts, that they will know that you are their light, their salvation. You are the strength of their lives. I pray that their hearts will be encouraged, their hearts will be strengthened. And God, that they will believe, that they will see the goodness of the Lord upon their lives in the land of the living. Bring them out of this and help them to wait upon you to see your salvation in their lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for being with us. And until next time, remember, live life the Jesus way. Hi there. We're so delighted to introduce to you our free church app. Uh, this app is loaded with features and resources that will greatly enrich your life. So head out to the app or Google Play stores, search for All People's Church Bangalore and download the app right now. It's going to greatly enrich your journey with God.